Hi, this is Paul Gadbois, and the following clip is from My Train Signal Security Plus training. In this section, we're going to take a look at the difference between a network based and a host based intrusion detection system. And to begin with, let's take a look at the network based intrusion detection system, or a NIDS. Notice that we've installed some components on the network itself. We have these devices here called IDS sensors, which gather information off the wire. Now the way that they gather that information is by being connected to the wire using a device called a tap. It's like a splitter. It allows the traffic to flow across the wire the way it normally would, but at the same time a copy of everything that's going across the wire also gets sent down to the sensor. Those sensors will then send that information down to the collector, and the collector is what's going to do the analysis to determine whether or not it's just normal data or whether it's an attack that's taking place. Now the other device that we have would be the IDS manager, and that would be a PC or a laptop that has a client software on it that allows the user of this computer to manage the configuration of these particular IDS devices. Now, the thing about a network-based intrusion detection system is that its primary responsibility is to protect the whole network in general. So any traffic that's coming across the network will be scoped out and analyzed by that network-based system. Now, if you want to get really granular and very specific about protecting some of your critical endpoints, you would then put a host-based intrusion detection system on those particular endpoints that you want to protect. So you may have an email server, and you may have a file and print server, and you may have a web server, and each of these different devices may get attacked differently because of the way that those servers function. So by putting an, a host-based intrusion detection system on those endpoints, you can customize the way that IDS works on that device to protect it from those particular types of attacks. Now that plus your network-based intrusion detection system becomes a relatively formidable defense against bad guys. So Global Mantics, realizing that they may have a need for both, are planning to put into their recommendation a host-based for critical endpoint systems and a network-based for everything else. So this is going to be part of their recommendation when they send their document up to management. Now let's take a look at the difference between a signature-based and an anomaly-based IDS system. To begin with, let's take a look at signature-based. What you get with a signature-based IDS system is an attack signature database that keeps records of all of the different types of attacks that might occur on your network. Now anytime a sensor sends information down to your collector, it will compare that information against the attack database and if it finds a match, it knows that you're under attack. However, if there is no match, it's going to assume that everything is normal. And I say assumes that it's normal because one of the shortcomings of a signature-based IDS environment is maintaining this database, making sure that it is accurate and up-to-date all of the time. It's just like antivirus software. If you're not up to date on your signature files, then you might get a virus because the antivirus software doesn't know how to protect you. The same thing is true with an intrusion detection system. It cannot identify an attack that it doesn't know about. So you need to make sure that you have the discipline in place to keep that attack signature database up to date all the time. And that way, you can have confidence that your positives are positives and your negatives are negatives. Now let's take a look at anomaly-based IDS systems. With anomaly-based systems, you actually get a network history database instead of an attack database. Now a network history database collects information about the normal behavior on your network. And over time, it establishes a relatively accurate baseline of what regular behavior is. Then, anytime there's a deviation from normal behavior, it will be compared against the baseline and a determination will be made as to whether or not that's an attack. Now there are some pros and cons to signature based and anomaly based. One of the cons of anomaly based is that there's a potential for more false positives 
because of the fact that you're not locked into an absolute signature of attack. It's looking at behaviors on the network, and there's a chance that what might be normal behavior may be misunderstood as an attack, and so some false positives may occur. Now the upshot though to anomaly based is the fact that it's not locked down to a signature database. Signature databases are limited into just what they know about. So any attack that's not part of that signature database may not be detected as an attack. So there's a chance you may catch something with anomaly base that you didn't catch with a signature database. Now with a signature database the thing that's nice is that you absolutely know that if you detect a pattern on the network that is part of a signature that the, there's a high degree of probability that it is an attack. So false positives are a little less likely when you're dealing with signature based as opposed to anomaly based. Now at Global Mantics they feel that reducing false positives especially as they're beginning to wrap their arms around intrusion detection Eliminating or reducing false positives is a positive thing. It's a good thing for them. They also feel that they have the discipline in place to keep that signature database up to date all the time. So they're going to make a recommendation to their leadership that they start out with putting a signature based IDS system on their network and then they're going to review this again in a year and determine whether or not it's doing the job that they need it to do and by that time they'll have a better opportunity to be able to do more research on anomaly based systems and determine whether or not it might be a better solution but for now they're going to start off with signature based intrusion detection and they're going to make that recommendation in the document that they're preparing now let's take a look at the difference between a reactive or a passive intrusion detective system. First of all, we're going to take a look at a passive system. In a passive system, let's just say that your network was under attack. So the attack comes in, your IDS sensors pick up those packets and realize that it's interesting information that needs to be sent to the collector. The collector compares that against the attack signature database that Global Mantics is going to be using, and it realizes that yes, this is an attack. So the IDS collector sends that information off to the alarm server and the alarm server will alert you to the fact that we have an attack going on on the network. However, that's where the intrusion detection system ends. It doesn't do anything else for you at that point other than just alert you. That is a passive intrusion detection system. Now let's take a look at a reactive intrusion detection system. Let's see that attack happening again. So we've got the packet coming in that's a hacking attack and the sensors pick up those packets and realize that they're interesting and that they need to be sent to the collector. The collector receives that information and sends it to the Global Mantics attack signature database and it realizes I'm under attack. So what the collector does is it sends that information off to the alarm server and you get alerted. But then the collector will send some information, some instructions to your router or possibly your firewall and tell it to block that activity from getting onto the network. So there's where a reactive IDS system can actually take some kind of action to be able to stop the attack at the entry point. It can communicate with your networking devices and it can send meaningful instructions to those devices in order to be able to get them to do something to block that whether it's to not allow certain traffic from a certain IP address or whether it's to block something based on the protocol or the port that's being used whatever the action is that's all coordinated with your IT department and your IT security team to determine what kind of reaction you want and then the instructions can be sent and the action can automatically take place now immediately you're protected but as a security team, you can't just assume that it's okay to leave those blocks in place just because it was a response to an attack. You need to investigate the attack. You need to take a look at how those devices blocked the attack and determine whether or not it's reasonable to lift those blocks or whether you should be leaving them in place. So just because you have a reactive IDS system doesn't mean that that takes all of the pressure off of the IT security team. What that means is that it gives you a way of immediately addressing the attack and it gives you the time you need to do your investigation so that you can determine whether or not any harm was done and how you want to reset your network back to normal operating mode once the attack is completed. That's what a reactive IDS system will do for you. Thanks for watching. 
You can get this same material plus much more for my Security Plus course at trainsignal.com.